morning. I'm really excited to be here this morning, although I feel like I've come home because I've been here so many times already. I, I know a lot of you that are sitting in the audience. We've interacted upstairs in the greenhouse. I, I sat next to one of the designers of that, Greg Kish, who's become a very good friend of mine. And I feel like this idea has really uh, not only been initiated, but the seed has been planted, the nutrient solution has been placed on it, the growth of the plant has occurred, and now what I'm about to show you is something that started also in a classroom, and I, I want to surprise you with the, the way this idea has grown since 1999. So let's start by pressing this phone and getting something to work. Remember, smartphones are only as smart as the people who work them. <laughs> so let's go back and just look at the title. Vertical farming is here. Yes, it's right here. It's right upstairs. You know this. Let me show you where else it is. Well, we know what that means, right? I don't have to tell you what this means now because everybody here already knows what vertical farming means. But just in case you don't, it means growing food in tall buildings inside the cityscape where we live. Why shouldn't our food come from where we choose to live? Sounds weird, right? It did in 1999, I can tell you that. So when you get a little bit older and you get into college or you get into graduate school, you know what, you're allowed to explore weird ideas. Remember what Albert Einstein said about weird ideas. He said if it doesn't sound crazy enough, then it's probably not worth working on. And that's a good way to approach this because in the beginning, raising food in tall buildings seemed kind of ridiculous. Why would we want to do that when we can raise all of our food outside? That's where it came from, didn't it? Well, if you go back just 10,000 years ago, it didn't because there were no farms then. So farming is pretty recent in terms of human history. So we began working on this idea. Why? Because of all the things that those wonderful students that just presented showed you. The climate is changing. Where we used to be able to farm, we can't farm anymore. Where we used to farm, there were floods, or there were droughts, or there were floods and droughts. There were insect pests that came in and ate everything we grew, or the plant diseases took over and ate everything before the insects could get there. Farming outside is a really iffy prospect. Every year, the farmer has to pray for rain, not too much, the right temperature, not too much, and then in the end of the year, he has to pray, or she, has to pray for the fact that there's a market for what they've produced. So we began working on this, and here are all the reasons that we came up with as to why vertical farming is a good idea. So you can start with the fact that, of course, we just covered that one. So we don't have any agricultural runoff. Does anybody here know what agricultural runoff is? You don't get that with indoor farming. Why? Because all the water is recirculated. But outdoors, when they irrigate to supply water that, it, that didn't come because it didn't rain, what happens to the water that the plants don't take up? Well, that runs off. And what has it got in it that it didn't have before? It had all the things that you put in the soil to make sure that the plants grew right. Fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides. All of those chemicals that we have created to make farming possible in a situation where farming shouldn't occur because farming is not ecological. We've made it work because of these products. And so when we irrigate, all of that gets into the water and washes down to, hmm, goes into the ocean. That's not so good. We have more control over everything. We use less water, much less water. We use less energy, too, in the long run. And we can even purify our drinking water from gray water by using plants that we don't eat. So the next thing you know, working on this for just a short 10 years, in my classroom, Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> no, I think give them a hand. <laughs> this is a Kish and Cathcart times three. What you're looking at here is a three-story greenhouse. What's so ridiculous about that? A lot of people thought this was a ridiculous idea. You can read about it. 
you know, a lot of them actually went so far as to publish articles about how ridiculous vertical farming is to even think about. Well, tell that to the Koreans because they built it. And here's what it looks like inside. It looks like just your greenhouse. It looks cool. It, these are grow lights that produce wavelengths of light that the plants need. They don't produce extra wavelengths of light that the plants don't need. And that's the virtue of doing it indoors. You get to control everything. Outdoors, guess what? You control nothing. How would you like that as a choice in your own life? I get to choose everything or I get to choose nothing? Well, okay, I'll say that differently. You get to choose everything or you get to choose nothing. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you say it, it comes out to the same each time, right? Nothing is not a good choice. Here's the director of the program in Korea. It's in a little town called Suwon. And here's why it works, because this is the science behind why this works. Chlorophyll A and B only have two wavelengths of absorption in the spectrum of light. So if we supply that kind of light, which turns out to be purple if you put red and blue together, you make plants very, very happy. And so happy they grow twice as fast. Here we have indoor crops, and here we have a happy user. I actually, like upstairs, I ate some of this, and you can see the end result. There are other places in Korea where indoor farming exists in multiple layers. I would classify this as a, a vertical farm as well, although I wasn't aware of it at the time. This is in Japan. We have a reporter here from Japan, I know. Please raise your hand. Where are you? You're right over here. She's right over here. She's come all the way from Japan to hear this. And <laughs> and, and here is an operational commercial vertical farm in Kyoto. They're building another one, they said, near Fukushima. Does everybody know where Fukushima is? It's where the nuclear power plant melted down after the tsunami. They're going to prove to the world that they can raise radiation-free food because indoors you get to control everything, including whether radiation gets in or not. And inside it looks basically the same as the uh, vertical farm did in uh, Korea. Indoor farming, lights, no windows. Notice there's no windows in that building. They use grow lights all together. In Singapore, they want to build vertical farms all over the city to ensure the fact that they know where their food is coming from. They trust food that they can grow themselves. In Chicago, yes, we have vertical farming in the United States also. Chicago took an old meat packing plant in Chicago in the downtown district where they used to have the stockyards. Imagine a million head of cattle crowded into a city the size of New York. That doesn't work, does it? And yet they were doing it on an annual basis. Over a million head of cattle were brought into Chicago, slaughtered, packed up in these meatpacking plants and shipped out to the restaurants of the world. That no longer happens there because the people who lived in Chicago objected to the smell Imagine waking up every day and it smelled just like a ranch, only worse. What's that smell? Oh, that's the stockyards. You know what happened? People began to move out of Chicago because they didn't like it there, because it smelled bad. So the mayor of Chicago changed everything by actually preventing slaughtering of animals inside the city limits of Chicago. This left a lot of buildings available, and one of them was this meatpacking plant and look what happened next. What happened next is the, the current mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, showed up. The owner of the vertical farm, three stories, showed him around along with an assemblywoman who wanted to tell her constituency that this is a great idea, not a good idea. And here's the why it's a great idea, because it uses closed loop agriculture, meaning nothing leaves the building except produce. And here's the way it looks inside. Isn't that cool? It's cool, it's, you would like to work there. And here's the way it looks on your plate. 
But the real vertical farm is being built right now as we speak in a little town in Sweden called Linkoping. Linkoping is how they would pronounce that in Sweden. Linkoping. It's going to be 17 stories tall. Woo! If you had doubts as to whether the others were vertical or not, you will never have a doubt about this one. That's as high up as you, as you should go, probably, with the concept. But imagine how many 17-story buildings you could fit into New York City. If we just use the available space that's out there now, like, for instance, Floyd Bennett Air Force Base, 3.2 square miles of unused space within the city of New York. Here's one that recently got their funding and they're building this in Jackson, Wyoming, of all places. It's in the middle of a very, very beautiful place. But they have a lot of workers that farm in the summertime, and they're, they're without jobs in the winter. They're going to give them jobs inside this vertical farm. So the, why that raises the big question, right? Who wants to be next? Who wants to be next? Raise your hands if you want to be the next owner of a vertical farm. Boy, oh, look at all those hands. And, <laughs> So here's one that's planned for the city of Milwaukee. It's five stories tall, and it's run by a gentleman by the name of Will Allen, who is a champion of people who need jobs, who don't have jobs, but know how to do something. He trains them as to how to grow food in greenhouses. Let's give them a bigger greenhouse. Let's give them a vertical farm. Here's one planned for Holland. Remember I told you about the light? Here's one that's underground so that there's no chance for sunlight to get in. All of the light here is supplied by grow lights. Isn't that interesting? That's an upside down vertical farm. Let's, let's go back to, to our country, the city of Chicago. Anybody who's been to Chicago knows about the old Navy Pier. It's a great uh, place to go and relax. They want to convert that old Navy Pier into a demonstration project for a larger vertical farm, and I hope they succeed. So if you want to learn more, but there's lots more to come, so stay tuned. Thanks.